The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of Access for Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting groups. If you'd like to produce a show, call us at 260-421-1250. Everybody, this is Patty Hunter. Today's my co-host is Terry Doran. Welcome. Thank you, Patty. Welcome to Patty's page. That was a. <laughs> Anyways, uh, our guest today that is a phone-in is Delaney Bruce, and she is with uh, Leonard Pelche. Offense. Defense. Defense. Offense right. committee. committee. All right. <laughs> Defense offense. Oh, I'll say it right. Say it again. Defense offense committee. That's right. Thank you, girl. I see a good picture of you. You look wonderful. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do. It's if good you say so. <laughs> oh, you, yeah. Well, we have questions. I agree. Uh huh. Uh huh. We have questions for you, girlfriend. You're all ready. So, are you ready for this, eh? Yeah, let's go for it. I'll go get her done. Um, this, um, how is Leonard doing? Well, he's, he's doing as well as can be expected. You know, he still has ongoing health problems. Um, we hope that he'll be undergoing a full physical um, very soon, of course, he is still dealing with the federal prison system, so we don't hold out a lot of hope in, in terms of him getting proper care. Um, you'll remember that he had a cancer scare yeah. um, and finally got a prostate um, biopsy a little over a year ago. Um, that proved to be Good news, you know, there was no cancer detected. Okay. Um, however, his symptoms have persisted, and he's never been given any kind of a diagnosis um, as to what all is going on with his body. And, of course, everything is complicated by the fact that he has uh, pretty extreme diabetes and hypertension and various other um, long-term chronic illnesses. So... But overall, I will say his mood is, is very good. Nice. He's very hopeful. Um, things are looking up in, in terms of um, folks coming on board, members of Congress and other people expressing an interest in his case. Um, so, you know, he's encouraged um, by some of what is going on, and, and you know, that keeps him going. And since he was moved to USP Coleman, um, mo most of his privileges have been restored. The one thing that they have not allowed him to resume um, is painting. Painting? Oddly enough. They really? He's yeah. such a wonderful so, artist. What, why, uh, why are they forbidding know. that? Just for spite <laughs> to punish him? I guess. Oh, I mean, we, we really don't know what the reason for that is. Well, his um, he only are... got his phone privileges yeah. back in late April, you know, and he's been at Coleman since last September. So Where's that located, Delaney? Coleman. That's in Coleman, Florida. It's, okay. it's central Florida, right smack between Orlando and uh, Tampa. Oh. Does he find much difference, and he's been in what, at least three prisons, I believe, that I can think of. Yeah, uh, the is there much difference in the treatment of him? Well, it's a larger facility. Um, there is a huge prison complex there, and, and there are, in fact, two maximum security prisons there, as well as a medium security and a camp. 
So he's never really been in that kind of a situation. Um, the prison population in the facility where he lives is um, a little larger um, than he's accustomed to. The good news was with being transferred to Coleman, he's now met up with some of the guys he was in Leavenworth with. Oh my. So at, at least, you know, he had prior acquaintances and and felt a little more comfortable, if nothing else, that the bros will look out for him, you know. Are there a lot of Native Americans yeah. in jail? So that, that's been good. That has made the transition a little easier. But it seems to be a more oppressive atmosphere. Oh. He is on lockdown. The entire prison is on lockdown more than they're not. Um, certainly more than I've ever seen in any of the other prisons where he's Very has sensitive been there, aren't they? Pardon me? They're very sensitive at that prison then. If even yeah, and it may just be the style of the warden. Oh. Um, you know, and, and any assault or anything like that happens, you know, the people responsible aren't the only ones that are held accountable. The entire prison population is. So. Wow. You know, it, it's totally outside of their control. And, uh, you know, when a lockdown happens, that means he's in his cell 24 hours a day. Um, and many of these lockdowns seem to be lasting for weeks at a time. So oh. that's, that that's right. a challenge. That is so not right. Um, how big is the cell, do you know? Well, it's a standard federal cell. Um, and I'm not even sure at this point whether he has a cellmate. I suspect that he does. Um, they did um, finally move him to a bottom bunk. Oh, yeah. um, you know, he has trouble climbing. So uh, they finally got it through their heads that, you know, this is in fact a man getting on in years. Um, he will be 68 this coming September. September what, 12? Yes. That's his birthday. And, uh, you know, he just can't be climbing like that. <laughs> no. no. It's dangerous. So they did finally move him to a, a bottom bunk. And uh, otherwise, you know, he seems to be adapting. He doesn't like the Florida heat. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's pretty um, bad there. It's not something he's accustomed to. Um, and this will be his first full summer in that. It's and pretty hot down there, yeah, too. Yeah, it gets downright tropical. So, um, and I don't even know if the facility is air-conditioned. I know many of the ones that he's been in were not air-conditioned. They, they, they run these, like, humongous fans. Oh. Um, They're old prisons. And, and that's it. So uh, I've, I've never actually asked them if it's air-conditioned. I hope it is. They're old prisons. How long have they been around? The oh, here? yeah. I mean, Leavenworth was around for many, many years. I don't know how old Coleman is, actually. For June 26th, what's happening there this year? Well, June 26th is, is the 37th anniversary um, at the firefight, of the firefight at Oglala in South Dakota. It's there at the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. Um, the 13th... Uh, I think it's the 13th annual Oglala commemoration will be taking place at Oglala. What's that? Uh, and well. that is, um, oh gosh, they, they have a gathering at the graveyard there um, mm -hmm. at Wounded Knee. Right. Um, at the, uh, no, yeah, the grave site of Joe Stunt, who is the young Native American man who was killed during the firefight. Um, in 1975. Um, you think a lot of people will come? A lot, of, a lot of people will come to this? Do you well, hope? hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I, I have no idea. Um, I pray that they do. I mean, it, it kind of depends. We certainly have been promoting it for a good long while. But usually, people come as far away as uh, Europe. Oh. So, um, and, you know, some people make that part of their their summers every summer. Um, this year is special because um, 
a permanent marker will be placed um, in the area where the shootout took place. Oh. Um, and that's really something that a lot of us have been working towards for years, that there needs to be some, some permanent uh, evidence of what went down on the reservation that day in 1975. So um, I gathered that a number of different um, AIM, American Indian Movement leaders, will be on hand. Um, some of our board members will be on hand. I had hoped to travel there this year, but I have to be someplace else. And uh, yeah, I think uh, certainly many of the locals, um, after they have a prayer ceremony at the grave site, they do a march to the Jumping Bull property where the firefight took place. And they share memories. Um, remember the warriors that have passed um, during the last year. Um, this year they'll be talking a bit about Ted Means. Um, Ted? And I understand their special guest this year is Russell Means, who will be sharing some thoughts about Ted. Um, Tell us about Ted. Pardon me? Tell us about Ted Means. Uh, you know, I mean, he's just one of the AIM members. I don't, you know, I, oh, okay. I don't really know a great deal about him, quite honestly. He's not one... I mean, he's mentioned often, but you don't really get a lot of detail about him since the focus is most often on people like, you know, the Belcourts and Dennis Banks and, and Russell Means. Um, the end? I, I understand there's going to be an honoring for Russell Means as well, and, and that was something that was brought about at the request of Rossland Jumping Bull. Um, Russell has had a real rough time in recent years. Um, and he is, uh, has been fighting a, a cancer battle of his own, but the good news is he's in remission. Oh, thank God. And, and he's over 70 years of age oh now. My. I mean, all these guys are getting up there in age. Um, you know, and they'll have a feast there at the property and a giveaway. And then that evening there at the casino, um, there will be a youth concert. A youth um, concert? That they have every year. And they have various performers from the Pine Ridge area. Um, and a good time is had by all. So it's a full one-day thing, lots of activity. And uh, we certainly wish them much success with that. What casino is it, dear? Uh, you'd have to go to our website. I don't have that committed to memory right now. Okay. Um, yeah, folks should uh, check our website at www.whoisleonardpeltier.info and click on the calendar link and all the information will there be there listed under June 26. Who's uh, responsible for the uh, marker at the site? Is it your committee, the reservation, Pine Ridge, or uh, The Oglala Commemoration donation? Committee raised the funds. Um, they host an auction throughout the year, and that's how they raise the money to hold this annual event. It's a free event to the public. So, you know, they, they have to go through the struggles of grassroots organization trying to raise these funds. Um, and um, we certainly have put it out to our network to, to assist the committee in, in that sense. Um, the committee has donated various items to be used for the giveaway. We do that every year. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Oglala Commemoration Committee also goes around um, the powwow circuit to a certain extent, and, and they table and educate you about the committee's work and about Leonard's case, of course. Um, so yeah, I mean, they, this is a year-long fundraising effort, and they knew that this was planned, and. We started getting price quotes and things like that about six months ago. Oh my! And, and at least Ben knew what you know we were facing in terms of the cost of this. And uh, yeah, they pulled it off. So <laughs> we're very pleased, as are they, and Leonard's very pleased as well. And all good. What other events are you doing trying <laughs> to raise for Leonard? Um. Uh, New York City will be doing an event on June 23rd, um, and we've heard of a vigil in Belgium. 
Um, we, we've been trying to get people to report their activities and they haven't been exactly forthcoming. I suspect many of them will wait until the last minute, which is unfortunate. Um, so those are the only ones I've heard of so far. Um, you know, and, and it's a whole range of things, a vigil or a picnic or, you know, showing films and, and those kinds of things. Um, June 26 uh, tends to be a little more quiet. Um, Subdue. And I think in recognition, you know, even the events, I mean, they're not real flashy in nature and, and that's in recognition of the persons who lost their lives um, during the reign of terror there on the, on the reservation. So it has a whole different feel than, let's say, the International Day of Solidarity with Leonard Peltier. Um, so or, even, or even his birthday. So um, most of the things that are being done are, are kind of low-keyed because of that. So it's going to be a subdued, in a way, uh, in uh, remembrance. Yeah. And um, the same with uh, Leonard's birthday on September 12th. He's yeah, going to I, I suspect that things are going to be a tad more active. Yeah. Um, on that date. He'll be 68, no less. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. How yeah. long has he been in yeah. prison now? Just what I've been, yes. He is, he's been in for over 36 years. Oh, man. That's not cool. These, these events must help him tremendously keep his spirits up. I mean, uh, I don't know how he does it in a way, but uh, I know that these events for him must mean a lot and keep him going. And his, his uh, refusal to bend, to give in, has a lot to do with people supporting him too. I think it works both ways. Oh, most definitely. I mean, the worst thing for any prisoner would be to be forgotten. Um, you know, because even even being surrounded by, by fellow prisoners or whatever, every single one of those prisoners feels very alone at most mm -hmm. in time. So, and yes, he he is very. Um, uplifted, <laughs> you know, yeah. by being remembered, by people writing to him, holding events. Um, it's very important, um, not only for that, but to, to try to keep this on the radar screen as, as, as far as the American public is concerned and, and the world. Um, oh, I just received something that I guess San Jose, California will be hosting some kind of an event on the 26th as well. Oh, no good. details as yet. Okay. Um, so it is important. And this year in particular, it's an election year, and the outcome of that election is by no means <laughs> um, set in stone. Almost anything could happen. We could have a one-term president in Mr. Obama. Um, so clemency is, is really our focus right now. Uh, we need supporters to be writing and calling and emailing um, the White House um, as often as possible to um, express their support for Leonard's freedom. Um, we're also asking supporters to contact their members of Congress as well. Uh, members of Congress can't necessarily release Leonard, but they can certainly influence a clemency decision. So we would ask that people contact their representative in, in the U.S. Congress and also their senators and ask them to support um, a grant of clemency for Leonard Peltier. Yes. Because you're right. You know, nearly 37 years is a very long time. It's it, too long. It really goes, it, it doesn't even make any sense from if you're going to view this as a punishment thing. Um, you know, 36 years is, you know, when, when a lot of these laws were put into place, people didn't live very long. Well, guess um, what? He lived a long time. You know, and, and even the Bureau of Prisons considers, you know, 30 years to be a lifetime you know, technically. So oh, yes, um, it really is time um, just to let this, this man go home. And um, the president has the power to do that. Um, and he can do it any time he wishes, any way that he wishes. He can 
um, you know, set any conditions on Leonard that he, he would want to. So it's entirely up to Obama, and, um, you know, basically any solution to this, um, we're, we're open to discussing it, <laughs> and uh, so is Leonard. Um, even home confinement is acceptable to Leonard. And that's hard for a lot of supporters to understand, but being able to look out your window oh, and see yeah. your homeland and visit with friends and family and, and those kinds of activities um, would be a major difference in this man's life. And as I said, he's not getting any younger and he's not getting any healthier. Um, and it really is time for the United States to do something, frankly, before it's too late. That's right. Because he is getting up there in age, you know. How was the walk? What was the length of it? And when yeah, it they walked from Alcatraz to the Oneida Nation in Wisconsin. Um, How long did that take? Well, they started um, in December mm. and wrapped up in May. And I understand they, they wow. still plan to maybe visit um, some of the other Indian nations that weren't along the route. Um, so that the tribal outreach will continue. There are other people in prisons who are Native Americans. Most definitely. And um, I, are people trying to get them out as well? Well, you know, I mean, Leonard, I mean, let's face it, Leonard's a political prisoner, so yes. his, his situation is different. a little bit different, although oh, yeah. I would argue all of them are political prisoners. Yeah by virtue of being Native American in many instances. Uh, I think that's an excellent point, yes. Uh, um, Native is, American... I mean, does this right. kind of effort go on? No. And, and there's a serious disparity in the treatment of reservation Indians. If they are convicted of certain very serious crimes, they come under federal jurisdiction, oh. which means they will go into a federal institution and they will not be eligible for parole. So they end up, you know, serving more time than they would if they were charged and prosecuted um, by state courts. Um, and they're the only population in the United States that, that has to deal with this. I mean, it's, it's nothing close to approaching equal justice because of that. And that's why Leonard said for many years that, that federal prisons are the, are the fastest growing Indian reservations in the country. Wow. Jeez. What, Terry, what are you going to say? Uh, well, that, that's quite a, a stunning statement when you think about it and think about our country. That, uh, and reservations in themselves are a unique real estate plan that the government came up with hundreds of years ago to put Native Americans on. And to my knowledge, they're the only ethnic group that those reservations exist, the only group that's placed on reservations. And I just read a recent study that said conditions continue to be bad, you know, as far as employment opportunities, uh, hope, uh, health, education. So it's really a disgraceful statement about the United States of America that these conditions continue to exist and that Leonard Peltier continues to be in prison 37 years after he was unjustly placed there. My. Most definitely, he never should have been imprisoned in the first place. That's right. Um, you know, and you make a valid point. We, we tend to concentrate a great deal on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. That reservation is one of the worst when it comes to the level of poverty there. Um, but many, most, of the Indian reservations are in the same predicament. We've got a lot of Americans who think, oh, they've got casinos, they're rich. Yeah. It's like, um, that is not the norm. And, um, you know, o Obama was being very forthcoming in, in terms of funding for various things, but all of that is being cut, a great deal of it. Um, you know, so so it, it, they're kind of playing a game of two steps up and one step back, <laughs> seems like. 
and uh, I can't imagine what it must be like for tribal leaders who are trying to take care of their people. And what Americans also don't understand, these are not giveaways. These are not, you know, it's not welfare. I mean, these are um, things that are due to these tribes based on the treaties that the United States signed with them. Um, you know, it's, it's not a handout. That's right. And they didn't live up to their promises. Exactly. Exactly. That way. And, and the plight is nationwide. I mean, there's no reservations in Indiana, but Indiana, where we live, Fort Wayne, used to be called Kikianga. It was a big Native American settlement. Anthony Wayne came and did all the Indians in, and the ones that he didn't do, they sent on boats to uh, out west. And now the name of the city, I think, is shameful. Fort Wayne, named after a, a, well, a soldier of the empire, Anthony Wayne. So, it, so people need to realize it's not just Pine Ridge, which is a, a, a well-known because mm -hmm. of all the history, most of it bad, Wounded Knee, Leonard Peltier, the shootout. But from the East Coast, the West Coast, and all points in between, this nation is littered with the unfairness of treatment of Native Americans. Yes. Who were here before us, don't forget. Yes. That's true. Wow. This is really an interesting whole half hour we're having with you, Delaney. Thank you. Uh, you know, I think your shirt, Patty, it has a painting of Leonard's. I think that's a self-portrait. Patty's wearing a Leonard Peltier uh, t-shirt with a self-portrait. I'm pretty sure Leonard painted it. And, uh, you know, I think he's a, a great artist, Delaney, and writer. And uh, it's a shame, added shame, that he's not allowed to do his art. That, that must have given him so much pleasure confined in a prison to uh, have that taken away from him is just another punishment we're getting a picture of this artwork well and that's not the only thing taken away from him uh, one of one of the things that um, he's grappling with right now is that having been thrown in the hole last summer on very bogus charges and spending an extended period of time in very, very hot conditions, he has now discovered that when he goes into the sweat lodge, um, he can't stay in there very long. He starts having very serious anxiety attacks. Oh, honey. So people who think that solitary isn't torture it better is. think again. Um, it does have an effect. Um, and of course, not only was he in solitary, but you know, under some very horrid um, conditions during a very extreme heat wave in Pennsylvania last summer. Uh, so you know, these things become impressed on a person's memory and soul, if you will. Yeah. And Delaney? it does; it has deleterious um, effects on human beings. Delaney. We are just about through our conversation here. The half hour is just about up. I'd like to thank you for coming onto my show, Delaney. As usual, you are a blessing. And Terry Doran, thank you for oh, coming onto my pleasure. show. And I'd like to thank everyone for coming on, for listening to the show. Let's free Leonard Peltier. God bless. See you next week. Thank you, Delaney.